Oh, I see what you did there, Rogers. Glenn Fry for David Fry. I get it. I get it. We welcome you back to the Patrick Netherton Show right here on 1130 The Tiger. We don't have Friday by Rebecca Black, unfortunately, uh, in the system, which I'm actually probably guessing David Fry appreciates that we do not. Uh, but we welcome in uh, former Northwestern State Demon, Player of the Year in uh, the state of Louisiana, Southland Conference Hitter of the Year, uh, the man that we affectionately referred to as Double Dave back in the uh, back in the day, Player of the Year in the Southland Conference, now with the Cleveland Guardians, and is uh, is making things work, which is pretty awesome. He is David Fry, who joins us. Fry, what's up, brother? How are you? Hey, Patrick. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's uh, so. Far, uh, the first question is, what the heck do I call you? What position do I give you on the team? Like, I, I can't call you an outfielder because you play outfield and infield and catch and pitch. Apparently, what do I call you? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. It kind of changes just about every week. So, uh, I, I guess just utility. Well, and look, that, let's be honest, that's a lot of the reason why you're up and why you're you're getting ABs, right? Because of your willingness to kind of play wherever Tito Francona needs you. I, I've got to imagine, look, we know when you were um, when you were here, great hitter, right? Northwestern State, we saw you. You pitched a little bit but injured the arm, and so you couldn't really uh, keep going with that. But the versatility that you've been able to come up with throughout the course of your career, through the minor leagues and into the major leagues, just how valuable is that for you? Yeah, it's, like you said, it's huge for me. It's gotten me a lot more bats in the big leagues, and it's kind of helped me stick around, uh, you know, not being the most athletic, fast guy there is. Um, it kind of helps when you can move around and uh, give the team options and uh, he, I, I've been put kind of all over in spots that, you know, I haven't played in a long time, but it, it's worked out and helped me get more playing time. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, because I've been saying this and I don't want to be wrong. Uh, last time I was wrong was uh, was before you were born. Um, <laughs> the You were you have now since you pitched, uh, you know, you came in and threw an, an inning there a couple of weeks ago. Have you now played every position as a professional? Uh, yes. And. Minor leagues right, with, major with minor leagues, leagues yeah. included, yeah. Uh, you yeah. have In the majors, you have not played center field short or second, right? Is that it? Correct. Okay. Correct. But you have now played every position as a professional, which is just insane, to be honest with you. Uh, I think you need to go to Tito Francona and ask him if you can do that thing where you play every position during the course of a game. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe when I get a few more years under my belt. Oh, maybe okay. I'll you can... That. You, 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 what you're saying is, as a rookie, you probably shouldn't go in demanding to play more positions. That's, yeah, maybe, maybe not yet. You know, I will say, though, I've got to imagine for you, David, that having Francona as your manager is a big deal, right? Because he's a veteran, but he's also a guy that's willing to think outside the box. He's not a, you know, he, he, does, he knows he doesn't have to prove himself. And so he can be more comfortable with, hey, we need to put Fry out and left in Wrigley Field. You know, let's go do that. I, I've got to imagine that works for you, right? Yeah, I think he, he's a huge part of why I'm here and why I've gotten to play a lot. Uh, he's he's a guy who fights for his players. And uh, like you said, I mean, he just comes up to you one day, hey, you want to play right field tomorrow? And you're like, sure, why not? Let's do it. And he, even when I first got called up, it was kind of like, went into his office and he's like, Hey, you really don't know what the heck we're going to do with you. We just wanted you up here for your versatility. Let's see what happens. And he's found a bunch of different ways to get me in the lineup. So definitely very appreciative of that. Now, uh, uh, no doubt. Tell me about pitching. What was, uh, what was that conversation like? Uh, pretty much it was, I mean, it was a 10 run game or something like mm -hmm. that. I'm coming in, coming into the dugout from left field and he just met me kind of top step as I'm coming in and he's just like, Hey, if I put you into pitch, are you going to do anything dumb? <laughs> I was like, trust me. I've, I've, I've already been hurt doing that. Uh, I will throw it as slow as possible. And he's like, all right, well, you got a, you got a chance to be in the big league. So uh, don't screw it up doing anything dumb. I said, yes, sir. You got it. Yeah. 
So what what's the approach when you go out on the mound? Because like you mentioned, right? You were you were you know back at Northwestern State. They were trying to get you into a role as a pitcher, and you injured your arm, and that ended up being kind of the year where you had to play a lot of first base, where you didn't have to throw it as much. You still played, but you weren't really able to do a lot in terms of that versatility. Uh, were you nervous, scared? Like, what was the thought process when you go out there on the mound for the first time in forever? Yeah, not not too bad. Just knowing as a hitter who's faced a position player, it's almost more stressful for the hitter because you know it's a lose-lose. Like, even if you get a hit against a position player, it's like you're supposed to. And then if you get out, you look like an idiot. So, as a position player on the mound, you can kind of – Throw right down the middle, say get a hit. It's like, yeah, congrats on throwing at fifty miles an hour. Right, get him out. It's just a, it's a bonus. So, what were you? Uh, what were you throwing? What was your velo? I think just about every pitch came in at like fifty three or fifty four miles an hour. <laughs> so basically, you were me back at the day at Hamels Park in Shreveport when I then they had the uh, the pitching machine where you would like the the radar gun and you throw it twice and then try to guess what you were going to throw on the third one. And, you know, you went up stuffed bear or whatever. I mean, I was throwing like 49, I think, in those. So, you know. That's right. You could have got some of the Cubs out. Yeah. I mean, but here's the <laughs> thing. As a hitter, right, this was always my contention with with when Northwestern State played LSU. Um, and I've told Bobby Barbier, your old coach, this is now at Southeastern. I've told him this 100 times. Throw the slowest pitcher you've got when you face LSU. Like, you, they may time you up after a couple of innings or a couple of times through the lineup, but that first time they're going to be baffled by what you're throwing, and I feel like that's the same thing, right? As a hitter, wouldn't it frustrate you to have a guy up there that's throwing 55? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, we, I mean, we faced a couple this year already who position players who were kind of doing the same thing, and you're, you're almost so trained to – hitting that higher velocity that when you see that it throws you off and uh i mean even yesterday we faced a guy who was throwing kind of like low 80s with his fastball ryan yarborough and i mean he he kind of tore us up because you're just you don't face that a whole lot and it, it messes with you yeah and it's and it's interesting now as well right that you you don't have uh, pitchers anymore you don't have Greg Maddox out there anymore you know everybody seems to be mid to high 90s everybody has wipeout sliders and, a, and crazy breaking pitches you just don't see a guy that goes up there and works and never you know tops 90 and so I've, I've got to imagine that's now that's now the guy you don't want to face right yeah you you you'd rather the the guy who's throwing super hard because at least in your mind you kind of know what you're going to get with the guy throwing slower you don't he's probably got eight different pitches and you don't know where it's going to be yeah uh you had a, you had a guy similar to that that you played with jerry maddox um who pitched who threw we always like to say he threw four pitches and they were all in a different uh portion like he, he threw one pitch that was in the 60s one in the 70s one in the 80s and one that could could hit 90 uh with his fastball and i, I that's those are the kind of guys to me that seem like they would be the most frustrating where you just can't get a bead on the guy and so when david fry comes in throwing 53 you know i i gotta imagine that's pretty tough on the on those guys um Talking to David Fry, the Cleveland Guardians utility player, because we don't know what position he actually plays. What have you played the most now? Uh, probably catcher. Mm -hmm. Probably caught most, especially being up in the big league. Last couple of years in the minors, maybe more third base. Um, but, yeah, at this point it's just trying to be comfortable at any position because it, it just seems to change all the time. How many gloves do you own? different gloves oh oh gosh um probably four four different ones and then a, like a backup backup for each of those for each, each, right oh so you so do you like i know a first baseman glove and a catcher's glove are different but do you have a different glove when you're playing third base versus left field yes that's Which, wild the, the fir first time i went out to outfield i had to use our outfield coach's glove because I, I didn't have one of those yet. That's beautiful. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. But you know what? It's it's working for you. It's making you stick. Uh, we, we were talking off the air beforehand. You just broke Craig Kimbrell's uh, long scoreless inning streak. And it's interesting. I saw a graphic that popped up yesterday that 
you have been hitting better in clutch situations uh, so far than you have in just, you know, say the top top of the first or whatever. Um, this was something we all have seen. Uh, I, I'll never forget your celebration when you hit the homer against UNO in the championship game um, of the Southland tournament. That's a, the most boisterous I'd ever seen you, the most animated I'd ever seen you in a, in a game. What? How has that translated to being able to get clutch plays? Like we said, two outs, bottom of the ninth. You get the homer off Kimbrell to tie it up the other night. Why has that translated so well for you in in big and high leverage situations? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's like any one thing. I think it just happens to be one of those things where I've been fortunate enough to get hits in those situations. I each at bat, I kind of try to treat the same. Just have come up with a plan for for that at bat and an approach and try to just put together a quality at bat it happened to work out the last couple of weeks it seems like in in big spot did you have an aha moment at any point you know you hear some guys say yeah well, i had this at bat um you know, you're uh, a guy that that former demon adam Aller was up and i asked him the same question and he said yeah i struck out aaron judge he's like all right that's when i knew that that i could play at this level um, was there an aha moment for you either in the minors or in the majors where it kind of clicked and you said, okay, I can do this? I mean, yeah. And when you're playing in triple a, you're obviously with a bunch of guys who have been up in the big leagues and I had some really good teammates who were nice enough to kind of be like, Hey, like it's a pretty similar game. Like you, you seem like you can probably handle it up there. And, but since I've been up, I don't think there's been like an aha. Mm -hmm. It, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest at first. I had some some struggles and one playing a whole lot. And, uh, I just I don't. There hasn't been one moment I would say that's like, oh yeah, now I belong. I right. Just think just trying to take take it day by day and see what happens. How hard is that to to stay in it and stay kind of locked in when you are. Uh, getting such disparate playing time. You know, you mentioned early on you might get an at-bat here. You might come in as a defensive replacement at some point. Um, you know, now you're starting to see a little bit more of a consistency within the lineup. But uh, how hard is that to kind of stay locked in and, and ready to go when you're used to being an everyday guy? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a different challenge. But our, our coaching staff does an unbelievable job with there's probably three or four of us that we're, we're kind of consistently coming off the bench and they do a great job of getting us ready middle of the game. We'll go to the cages and, you know, we'll, we'll come up with a plan and it's kind of like, Hey, this is the situation we probably see you coming in for this game. So you, you're looking at what pitcher you might face and you're going to prepare and put together a plan for that. Or if you're going to come in at a, a different position, you're maybe going to do some drills earlier that day for where you might come in. And so they do a good job helping us out and keeping us ready for, when the situation does come when we come in. David Fry from the Cleveland Guardians joining us, former Southland Conference Player of the Year at Northwestern State, now uh, up in the bigs. Has anything surprised you about the big leagues, whether it's on the field, off the field? Has anything kind of, uh, you know, been a, been a surprise to you, whether good or bad? Uh, ooh. I mean, the, f the first hotel that you say at the big <laughs> leagues, you're like, that, that kind of surprises you. You're like, holy cow, this is definitely different we, we were in new york and a uh, really fancy hotel in the middle of downtown mm -hmm. last day we were there i'm walking through the lobby and you see sylvester stallone walking through and you're like oh this, this is a little different yeah did did you talk to him to go say hi or just yell hey sly or anything anything yeah I, I wanted to say have some kind of rocky comment or quote for him but he had about four or five people around him and he looked like he was busy and i, I didn't want to get a left hook so sure <laughs> You wanted to give him a Rocky quote, not take a Rocky punch, is what you're... Yeah, that's, that's right. Well, and that's the cool thing, right? The travel at, at that level is so much different. And, you know, I mean, obviously, when you're, when you're in, at Northwestern State, you're bunking two, three guys in a, in a room. Uh, you know, it's bus trips everywhere. Your bus is overloaded. I, I, I basically refuse to ride the baseball bus, just to let you know. <laughs> I, I drove everywhere we went because there's just not enough room on the baseball bus. There just never is. Yeah, no, there, I, I will say Northwestern State got you ready for the early part of the minor league because it was very similar 14-hour trips where you're doubling up in seats and those kids who were at LSU or other SEC schools, they were kind of like, oh, we 
we actually bus places further than three hours away. Right. And so I had a little adjustment period for that. So all, all this that's here now is definitely way different for me. You know, we used to joke all the time about uh, Double Dave and, and how, you know, you you had to hit doubles because you couldn't hit triples and, you know, uh, you, you <laughs> couldn't run out of sight in a week and all, measure your 40 time with a sundial. We, you know, we always had lots of fun with that. Um, but here's the thing. You're, you, you have to be athletic to do what you're doing right now in the major leagues. You can't go from one side of the outfield to the other, one side of the infield to the other, catch, pitch. You can't do all of that without having some athleticism. But if I told you at your senior year at Northwestern State, if I said, hey, you'd have a couple of steals in the major leagues at some point in your career, would you have believed me? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I always felt bad. I always felt bad for Quan Atkins because you hit right behind him, and Quan is is fast as lightning. I mean, that guy's super fast, and he'd get on base and be like, "All right, well, you know, you got to steal seconds." Like, well, no, David's just going to hit a double and drive him in. So we're not. So Qu- poor Quan never got to steal bags when he was in college. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You stopped him from that. Uh, all right, so give me. Give, uh, so I obviously haven't been able to watch every game. Tell me about the stolen bases. Yeah, they were, I mean, with with the new rules, with the amount of pickoff that you get and uh, the the pitch clock, there, there's ways to kind of time it up. And you know, when when you're as slow as I am, you get on first base, the pitcher is not really worried about you. So you, you kind of hide in plain sight, and you start hopping around over there. They're not really paying attention, and you realize you're halfway to second base. I might as well go ahead and take off here. Uh, I think both of them have been standing up, so it oh. hasn't been. My, it hasn't been my speed. It's been they just forgot I was over there. D- defensive indifference, as they say. Yeah, just about. Yeah, I love that. Uh, all right, la- last thing, David, and I really do appreciate you taking some time for us today. Um, just the journey, man. You know, you you were a guy that obviously all the accolades in college and and had such a, a brilliant college career, and you get into the minors and you kind of have to make your way up. Uh, and you get to the show, and now that you're there, you're 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 staying, you're sticking. You know, you're not a, you're not on the taxi squad. You're not a guy that they're worried about sending down. You're valuable uh, to this franchise. Just what's that been like, man? That whole journey. Yeah, it uh, hadn't always been the easiest. I mean, Northwestern State was so awesome for me. It was the best thing that could have happened, and uh, I got to play every day there. And I, I mean, Coach Barbier was so great for me helping me get drafted and then uh i mean throughout the minors a lot of ups and downs it's taken a lot of faith but uh you know god god's blessed us with a lot and just, uh, just leaning on him and he, he's helped us get here the majors i mean there was the times in the minors where you don't think it's ever going to happen and then all of a sudden one day triple a manager tells you you're going up and you need to tell your family to get to new york and it, it just kind of you blink and you're like, holy cow, we've been in the big leagues for a couple months. Let's just keep our head down and hopefully we can stay here. And well, it, it's been crazy, but a lot of fun. And that was, to me, that was one of the cool things. You mentioned Bobby Barbier, who obviously we, we, we know and love, both of us. And he, he hopped a flight and headed up to New York to watch your debut uh, up at, in New York. I thought that was really cool. Oh, the, so awesome. But, I mean, our Cleveland staff, couldn't have been more impressed they we actually he was down on the field for bp and uh coach calipari mm-hmm. the basketball coach for kentucky he was there and he was kind of talking to him and he was like hey what so who are you like wh- why are you here he's like oh i'm from coach this guy over here at northwestern state in louisiana and he was like you flew up from louisiana to come see him for a day and he was like yeah i'm not like you i don't get nba players every day like right uh, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta celebrate this. This is my guy. So I came to watch him. And I think he got a picture with him. And uh, before that game, Tito and uh, a couple of our coaches were just like so impressed that he would make that trip just for a night to to come see me. It was, it was pretty special. Yeah, we were actually worried if he was going to make it back for the. Uh for that next series that next weekend we weren't sure if he was going to get back in time <laughs> but he made yeah it. they had a game they had a game the next day versus uh louisiana tech and mm-hmm. like, yeah if i miss it 
if I miss it, Bert can take over. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and look, Bert's taking over. So what do you know? Right. Um, please make sure to, to let I, – I told Barbier when the, the news was announced that he was the Southeastern coach that I think he looks terrible in green. Uh, so if you'll just back <laughs> me up on that next time you talk to him, I'd appreciate that. You know, we, uh, yeah, I'll let him know. Yeah, yeah, I do appreciate that. Look, uh, Fry, it's been absolutely crazy to watch you uh, ascend and, and watch you get to the bigs. You're all, you, every time I turn around, you're getting interviewed on uh, on the Cleveland broadcast, and uh, they obviously love you. Tito loves you, and, and you know we love you back down here in Louisiana. Brother, congratulations on this run, and keep it up, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick. Appreciate it. All right, David Fry. Left field, right field, third base, first base, catcher, pitcher for the Cleveland Guardians. Nothing wrong with that, Hambone. He's a good dude, man. Fry's such a good dude. And so, le like, just laid back, level-headed, you know. He's, uh, like I said, he hit, a, he hit a home run late in the game against uh, UNO back in 2018 when the Demons went to the, to the national uh, tournament out in Corvallis. He hit a... Um, he had a home run late in that game. I think it was the seventh inning. Um, yeah, he had a home run in the seventh inning, and that broke a 5-5 tie. And David was never a celebratory guy, like that kind of thing. But he, as he hit it, he, like, threw the bat down and still was like, get, you know, I, I've never seen him that pumped up. Uh, but that's what he was doing in clutch situations. And, by the way, in clutch situations now in the major leagues, he's having a lot of success including uh, getting the home run with two outs in the bottom of the ninth off Craig Kimbrell uh, a couple of nights ago to break his 16 or 19 inning uh, scoreless streak uh, and send him to extra innings. So good stuff, David Fry from the Cleveland Guardians. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I knew you would have more Glenn Fry because we don't have Rebecca Black's uh, Friday, so we don't have that. It's the Patrick Netherton Show, 1130 The Tiger.